Dr. Anifrida, postgraduate teacher from SLB Government Higher Secondary School. In this video, we are going to see the production of induced EMF by changing orientation of the coil with the magnetic field. Today, we are going to see 4.44 production of induced EMF by changing orientation of the coil with the magnetic field. So we are going to see how EMF is induced by changing the orientation of the coil with the magnetic field. This is a five marks question, which is often asked in 12th standard examination. See, this is how the armature is being rotated in the magnetic field. The so magnetic field lines move from north to south and this is the armature and this armature cuts the magnetic field lines right magnetic field lines or the flux so whenever the flux is being cut by this armature an emf is induced in the coil see here the magnetic field is moving along this direction that is horizontal direction this coil is being rotated if this coil is being rotated with an angular velocity omega then the orientation of the coil also changes orientation we take it as See, if this is the armature, we take the perpendicular of the area of the armature to be B cos omega t. The flux linked with the coil will be phi b, that is B a cos theta. If there are n turns in the coil, we can take the flux linkage to be n phi b, that is equal to n B a cos theta theta is equal to omega t and so uh, it is written as nba cos omega t. So according to Faraday's law, whenever the magnetic flux lines are being cut by the armature, an EMF is induced in the armature. That is epsilon is equal to minus d phi by dt of n phi. And we can substitute the value for n phi that is equal to minus d by dt of n b a cos omega t here n b a is a constant we can take it out we are just going to differentiate cos omega t the differentiation for cos omega t is minus omega sin omega t right and so omega is also constant it could be taken out minus and minus gets cancelled and so we get n b a omega sin omega t right when omega t is equal to 90 degrees that is when the orientation of the coil is in line with this the magnetic field when omega t is equal to 90 degrees the area vector of this coil is 90 degrees with that of the field right area vector means it will be perpendicular to the area. This is the area and it will be perpendicular to the area. So that unit vector of area vector and the magnetic field are in perpendicular or they are at 90 degrees. Sin omega t will be equal to 1 and so epsilon will become NBA omega or it could be taken that maximum induced EMF is got at this position when omega t is equal to 90. So epsilon m could be written as n b a omega and so epsilon could be written as epsilon m sin omega t. Right? We have already seen equations like this. Right? i is equal to i m sin omega t. v is equal to v m sin omega t. Likewise, epsilon is equal to epsilon m sin omega t see these are the pictures given in your book see here 
this is the armature and this armature is rotating within a field see this is the picture pictorial representation see this is the field the field is from north to south and so this armature is being rotated when the area vector of this armature and the field is in line then we say that omega t is equal to 0 and so epsilon will be equal to epsilon m sin theta and so the value will be 0 see here the sine graph is having a value 0 when omega t becomes pi by 2 that is when the area vector of the armature is in perpendicular to the field right field is in this direction horizontal and the area vector is perpendicular and so the area vector and the field b and a are perpendicular when omega t is equal to pi by 2 that is perpendicular then epsilon is equal to epsilon m sin pi by 2 sin pi by 2 value is sin 90 that is 1 so epsilon becomes maximum see here the sine curve gradually increases and reaches a maximum value when again the armature is being rotated and the area vector comes in line with the magnetic field at that time the omega t will be equal to 3 pi by 2 or 270 degrees it is starting from here it is rotating right so while it is rotating it takes a value 270 degrees at that time we get epsilon is equal to epsilon m to sine 270 sine 270 is minus 1 and so epsilon becomes minus epsilon m that is maximum of the value is got but it is in the negative direction again when it comes to this position again it is rotating and it is coming to this position at that time it makes one complete rotation the armature makes one complete rotation and so the omega t will be equal to 2 pi sine 2 pi that is sine 180 is 0 and so epsilon becomes 0 and so it gradually increases and reaches 0 value right this is the graphical representation of the sinusoidal graph got by the orientation of the coil we shall see now how to draw this graph easily see this is the orientation picture right then draw perpendiculars you can draw neatly with scale isn't it <laughs> yes draw like this this is the armature right different orientations of the armature you can draw neatly this is the armature this is the third position of the armature and this one full rotation is being completed here again next rotation is started okay so these are the different orientations so how to draw the graph see draw the y-axis and also x axis right along x axis we have omega t and along y axis we have epsilon that is the induced emf 
shall take another color. So when omega t is equal to 0, sine 0 is 0. And so the orientation, the graph starts from here. And at this position, it reaches pi by 2, the angle reaches pi by 2. And at this position, the angle, the orientation of the coil reaches pi. And at this position, it reaches 3 pi by 2. And at this position, the orientation reaches 2 pi. Right? And so, see the sine curve starts from here. When the angle reaches pi by 2, it attains a maximum value. The EMF attains a maximum value. When the orientation becomes pi, it reaches a zero value. When the orientation reaches 3 pi by 2, a maximum value is got in the negative direction. When it goes on increasing to 2 pi, it comes to 0 position again. This is one full rotation of the orientation of the coil. And so this could be given as the maximum of epsilon m. So epsilon is equal to epsilon m sine omega t. So this, this must be drawn. Epsilon is equal to epsilon m sine omega t. The EMF varying in this manner is called the sinusoidal EMF or alternating EMF. And in a closed circuit, if an alternative voltage is given, a sinusoidal current will flow. And so this current could be called as alternating current. And the value could be written as I is equal to I m sin omega t. What have we to write for the test when they ask for a 5 marks question is? See, draw this figure and write all these steps. That's all. This will give you 5 marks. Thanks for watching. Thank you. If there is any doubt, please give in the comment box.